There are five main types of reactions that I am going to cover on this YouTube channel and synthesis reactions are the first of those five reactions. A lot of people think um, these are the easiest ones to deal with because we're using some skills that you've already used at other places in the course. So sometimes a synthesis reaction may be referred to as a combination reaction. So we'll jot that down. So if you hear that term, just know it's the same thing. And the reason it's sometimes called a combination reaction is because in a synthesis reaction, you are taking two or more reactants and you get one product. So this is a very general um, synthesis reaction and you can see I've got two things on the reactant side, and again, you could have more than two, but I have two here and I have one product. So your big clue that you are looking at a synthesis reaction is one product. That is just something that stands out very specific for a synthesis reaction. We're going to look at two types of synthesis reactions today. The first type is called a binary synthesis reaction. And in a binary synthesis reaction, remember by means two, we are basically putting a metal with a nonmetal and we're getting an ionic compound. So we have the metal and nonmetal as our reactants and the ionic compound or the salt is our product. So what we're going to do is um, take a look at some at the reactants of some synthesis reactions and we are going to look at the reactants and we are going to predict what the product is. Before I go any further, I do want to bring your attention to this little part of the North Carolina reference table packet for high school chemistry students. If you're in another state, you probably have been given something similar maybe by your chemistry teacher. If you are in college, you probably have to commit this to memorization in order to use it on a test. Typically, these will not be given to you in college, but usually at the high school level, you'll have um, one of these little guides in front of you. So synthesis is the first one that we're looking at today. And um, you can see that we have three types of synthesis reactions listed. Um, the only two we're going to look at in this video are the binary synthesis and then the metal oxide water synthesis. But you can see right here, it tells us A plus B yields AB. Um, I'm kind of surprised they didn't just put metal plus nonmetal gives you um, an ionic compound. But you could also have like a metal and a polyatomic ion, so that may be why. But we're just looking at metal, nonmetal combinations first, just to keep it simple. So um, number one, we are putting sodium metal with chlorine gas. And anytime you have a binary synthesis, what you're going to do is really just take these back to the original ions and crisscross them together. So you know that sodium is Na plus 1. Now you know chloride is Cl minus 1. A lot of kids will stop me right here and they want to know where's the 2? Why aren't you using it? There's a 2 here because chlorine cannot exist alone. It can't just be floating around as an individual atom. It is always at least bonded to another chlorine. It could be bonded to something else, but it at least has to be bonded to itself if it's chlorine gas. But before we crisscross the product together, we're not going to use that too. That too is only there because that was just a chlorine atom by itself. So when you write the formula, you're actually going back to the original ions. And we know those ones cancel, so the product is NaCl. Now, I also want to point out we're not balancing any of these today, so they're really not 100% complete yet. Um, if you were doing a chemistry problem that required you to use a reaction, you would balance it before you would go any further, but we'll tie all of that together once you learn the basics. So let's look at number two. 
We have calcium metal reacting with chlorine gas. And this is just my little scratch work up here. You know, calcium has a plus two charge. You're gonna write the ion for chlorine, which is chloride. You're gonna crisscross, and so your product is CaCl2. Now, this two is not the same as this two. This two is here because chlorine is one of the special seven diatomic gases that I have my students memorize. There's seven of them. Um, I'll try to show you in just a little bit where those are again, just to remind you if you're just watching this video now. But that's why that two is there because that's the only way you can write chlorine gas. This two is a result of this crisscrossing that took place. So that's very, very important to remember. You didn't just carry this two over or take that plus sign out and just smack those together. This is a product of the way these were crisscrossed. The more of these you do, the easier it gets, really. All right, let's look at the next one. Potassium metal and sulfur. So potassium, we know, and again, this is just my scratch work, has a plus one. Sulfide is a minus two because it's in that negative two column of the periodic table. So when they crisscross, you get K2. S. Now your question here might have been, well, why did that not have a two down here if this one did? And the answer to that would be sulfur is not one of the special seven, therefore it is not diatomic and it can actually be written alone. Let me find a periodic table and I'll show you that. All right, I wanna cover this before we go any further, just in case, again, you're a new listener and didn't know this. There are seven diatomic gases that I have my students memorize, and the easiest way to remember them is go to number seven, which happens to be nitrogen, draw a seven, go to seven, draw a seven. These are the seven, you um, throw hydrogen in the mix, that's the seventh one, that are your diatomic gases. So nitrogen gas is N2, oxygen gas is O2, fluorine gas is F2, and so on and so forth. So go to seven, draw a seven, and invite hydrogen as well. You will never write in a chemical reaction just F for fluorine, it has to be F2. Um, and that goes for all of these plus hydrogen. All right, let's look at number four. We have potassium metal and bromine gas. So go back to the ions. Potassium is a plus one, bromide is Br minus one. The ones cancel and you get KBr. Number five, you have magnesium metal and nitrogen, and actually that should have a two on it, I missed that. So you have magnesium metal and nitrogen gas. So go back to the original ions. Magnesium has a plus two. Nitride is in, and I'm gonna show you where to find this charge. You go right here to the periodic table. Nitrogen is in the negative three column, so it's N minus three. And when you crisscross, you get M, G, 3, N, 2. Again, this 2 is not the same as this 2. These 2's are here for two different reasons. This 2 is here because nitrogen is a diatomic gas and it cannot exist alone. This 2 is here because this 2 is a product of this couple being crisscrossed together. All right, let's look at number six. We have lithium metal and we have phosphorus. So lithium and phosphorus have come in contact with each other. Lithium is a plus one. Phosphorus is in the negative three column of the periodic table. So when you crisscross, you get Li3P. Number seven, beryllium and oxygen gas. Beryllium has a plus two charge. 
oxide is O minus 2. The 2's cancel, and you get BeO. And the last one, we have calcium metal that has been exposed to fluorine gas. Calcium has a plus 2. Fluoride has a minus 1. When they're crisscrossed, you get CAF2. So the main things I want you to remember here is remember your diatomic gases. And the other thing I would tell you is on binary synthesis, you're always crisscrossing the new compound together. So we'll say crisscross to get the new product. And if you remember those two things, you won't have any trouble on binary synthesis compounds. Now, there's another type of synthesis compound that we're gonna look at, and this is going to be called a metal oxide and water synthesis reaction. And in a metal oxide water synthesis reaction, we have a metal oxide with water Real life, people. Hang on one second. I have somebody at my door. Are you looking for Caleb? Yeah. He's upstairs. <laughs> We're having a video lesson on synthesis reactions. Ooh, sounds like All right. So on metal oxide water combinations, we always get a base. And a base is any metal that has been crisscrossed with hydroxide. So that's something you need to know because you're gonna to have to know how to write that base. So let's go ahead and make a few notes about that. So these are our metal oxide water synthesis reactions. And the generic reaction is, you have a metal oxide, these are, have been crisscrossed together, it's just ionic, plus water and you always get a base. A base, is just a metal that has been crisscrossed with hydroxide. For example, if I crisscross sodium with a plus one with hydroxide with a minus one, that is sodium hydroxide and that is a base. So go ahead and commit that to memory. A base is a metal that has been crisscrossed with hydroxide. We have to know that for the metal oxide water synthesis reactions because our product is always a base. So looking at number one, we have calcium oxide with water. This is a metal oxide because we know calcium is a metal. All we're gonna do is we're gonna take this metal and we're gonna crisscross that with hydroxide to get our product. So calcium with a plus two, crisscrossed with hydroxide with a minus one is CaOH2. That is the base and that is the product of that reaction. So if you were to dump calcium oxide in water, that's exactly what you would get. Let's look at the next one. We have sodium oxide in water. So you would recognize this as a metal oxide water reaction. This is your metal, so we're going to crisscross sodium with hydroxide to get that base, and that is NaOH. Number three is lithium oxide with water. Again, a metal oxide water reaction. So we're going to take the metal, which was lithium, Lithium has a plus one. We are going to crisscross that with hydroxide, which is OH minus one, and we get LiOH. And again, this is just my scratch work up here at the top. These are your products. 
Number four, we have magnesium oxide and water. So we have a metal oxide and water. The metal is magnesium. Mg is plus two. Hydroxide is minus one. So we get MgOH2. Number five, zinc oxide with water. Zinc is the metal. We take that and we crisscross it with hydroxide. Remember, zinc's an exception. It's always plus two. And when you crisscross, you get ZnOH2. Number six, a metal oxide with water. The metal this time is silver. Silver has a plus one charge. So we're gonna write silver with a plus one, hydroxide with a minus one. The ones cancel, we get silver hydroxide. So you can see these are really easy to do. Metal oxide waters, all you've gotta do is take the metal that was attached to your oxygen and just crisscross that metal with hydroxide every time. So if you haven't done this yet, you may wanna pause the video and write these two down Try them, and then when I go over the answers, you can make sure you've got it. So beryllium oxide with water, beryllium is your metal, has a plus two charge. So beryllium is a plus two, oxygen is a minus two, the two, I'm sorry, hydroxide, sorry, we're putting that, that was just writing beryllium hydroxide, or oxide again, beryllium with hydroxide. There you go, BeOH2. And the very last one, potassium oxide with water. Potassium is our metal. Potassium has a plus one. Hydroxide is a minus one. The ones cancel and you get KOH. So um, really the only thing, if you were gonna make a special note on the metal oxide water synthesis reactions, um, you just may want to note that whatever metal you had attached to this oxygen is what you're going to crisscross with hydroxide. So our little clue here would be to crisscross the metal with hydroxide to get the product. which is a base, always. So today you have seen two types of synthesis reactions, just to go back over them real quickly before we end this tutorial. First of all, you saw binary synthesis, and binary synthesis reactions are simply a metal plus a non-metal that gives you an ionic compound. Um, keep in mind, you could also have a metal with a polyatomic ion that will give you an ionic compound. Um, we may see some more of those later. You know you have a synthesis reaction when you have one product. And that was true in both of the types that we did today. And when we have a metal oxide water reaction, we take the metal, we crisscross it with hydroxide to get our product. Again, you only have one product and that makes it a synthesis reaction. So the next lesson that we have, we will look at the opposite of a synthesis reaction and that is going to be a decomposition reaction. And we're gonna have lots of types of decomposition reactions that we're going to look at. So if you're one of my students or a student in North Carolina that has the reference table packet, I would definitely encourage you when you have, um, when you look at these other videos, that you have this part of your reference table packet out. Or um, maybe if you're a student from a different state that you um, pull this up online and have it in front of you because it'll make your life a lot easier as you're learning to write these reactions.